since I didn't actually film this case uh, when it came out of the box because I was using it for the VR build project as you can see here and uh, if you haven't seen that video by the way it came out I think two weeks ago, two weekends ago um, then do go check that out, it is really awesome we're playing with an HTC Vive and all that sort of stuff so that was a lot of fun but um, yeah because I, I didn't film this case properly when it first came out of the box and it sort of stock configuration and without a system in it um, I thought I would do a, a video on it just as a kind of thoughts, impressions and uh, build experience type thing so that if you are planning on buying this case you know what you're getting yourself in for there's also a couple of little tips that I would suggest uh, just to kind of ease the building experience um, as you're going but uh, yeah if you uh, if you enjoy this new format by the way please do leave a like and let me know in the comments down below as I'll consider doing more of these in the future it's uh, it's quite a nice thing but um, yeah let's let's get into the uh, the case anyway so the first thing I want to mention is actually the side panel that I've got currently open it's obviously uh, very much a kind of stylistic feature of it and I want to make a note that this handle does pretty much nothing um, there's a couple of magnets at the top and the bottom and if you try and lift it open as you can see it opens itself without touching the handle I don't know whether this is just our you know this unit itself or not but um, it's not a massive issue it's very easy to open with the handle but the actual latch sort of thing doesn't do too much either um, and I want to mention that this is also on a sort of pivoting uh, hinge so that you can actually lift it off if you want as well and have a very nice and easy building experience so that's pretty awesome inside the case the main thing with the power supply uh, sort of cover or basement is that it's plastic and removable it's actually two pieces so this uh, front piece here which covers the dual 3.5 inch hard drive bay um, or cage uh, and then the bit that actually covers the power supply there's two screws to remove these and if you have any uh, cables that you want to route through you actually have to route them through both holes uh, the hole in this and then the hole in this one so just do bear that in mind if you're planning on uh, routing your uh, you know GPU cables through that the main thing with this one uh, and the power supply basement is that because of the positioning of the hard drive cage the power supply can only really be generally standard length you can remove the hard drive cage if you want to use something like an AX1200i but the space that you have left for uh, cables and cable management is pretty much something like that so I do recommend installing the cables if you have a fully or semi-modular power supply first before you put the power supply into the system and uh, there, as I said there isn't much space so if you're not using three and a half inch hard drives I definitely recommend removing that cage straight away so that you have plenty of room and if you are planning on using an AX1200i or something you will have to remove the case, uh, the uh, cage uh, so that you can actually fit the power supply in. Now in terms of cable management room in the back, there's plenty, it was really easy to do and there's a decent enough amount of mounting points. There were a couple of things, especially where the 24 pin normally runs, I would have liked to see a few more there but other than that, that's plenty nice. And the other thing that's normally on the back uh, when we're talking about storage is this uh, triple uh, 2.5 inch or SSD bay basically where you drop the SSD in, there's a little spring at the bottom and it latches in um, with the sort of clip at the top and then you can put your SATA power and data in the top um, to connect it to the system and it's actually really really nice it's a very efficient and space uh, sort of conscious way of storing three three and a half inch drive uh, two and a half inch drives in the back um, just kind of out of the way which is really nice you can remove it with the two thumb screws and that's very easy uh, and I personally chose to remove it because we're using an M.2 SSD in this uh, build we don't have any 2.5 inch drives so it's just a case of there's more room in the back if you take it off and easier cable management um, but overall it's, uh, it's really nice um, another thing to note is that when you're building in the system um, the 8 pin and the HD audio connector so the 8 pin at the top uh, or 8 or 4 pin and the HD audio connector need to come through the holes first before you put the motherboard in otherwise you will not be able to get them through and you'll have to take the motherboard out again the hole for the, uh, the holes for the 8 pin connector at the top are just about technically big enough and you can probably wiggle it through if you really try but the HD audio connector is just impossible you will have to take the motherboard out again um, you literally cannot get it through without taking it out so uh, make sure you pull that one through first there is also another little quirk with the power cable or the, the cables for the power button and uh, that sort of stuff 
is that there isn't actually, because the, the motherboard sits basically on this uh, power supply sort of basement tier, um, there isn't really a hole that suits the power connectors that well. It's a little bit strange, but generally I've got them rooted through the bottom here where the GPU power cables are sort of meant to come up. Um, you could come through this side, but then again, that's still quite a long reach. So it just depends on your preference really, but that is something that's a little bit strange and sort of interesting. Um, the other thing is that because this is an ATX, chassis so it only fits ATX motherboards. Um, there's quite a lot of room between the grommets for the power supply cables and the motherboard. I don't know whether this is just to make these sort of bends easier and that sort of thing which it definitely does well um, but there is quite a lot of room there so that you will see a lot of cables so if you're planning on going with some extensions or something like that then this might be quite nice. The final thing to mention is that when you're installing a closed loop water cooler um, if you're installing it at the top, for example, this is a Corsair H100i V2, um, you might actually be hitting your RAM, especially if you have high profile RAM. This uh, this stuff, the Kingston uh, Savage RAM is actually quite low profile, so it's not too much of an issue. But if you had, for example, the new Vengeance LED RAM that actually sits quite tall, um, you won't be able to install the cooler at the top, you'll have to install it at the front, which isn't too much of the problem because there is actually a magnetic dust filter in here, which is actually a little bit nicer than the magnetic one at the top. And on the top isn't really that fine, it's more for aesthetics than anything else, whereas the one on the front is actually quite useful. So um, I'd personally recommend putting it on the front actually, but um, it, you know, if you do plan on putting it on the top, just do bear that in mind as well. So I guess in terms of sort of build considerations and thoughts, that's generally it. I really do like the styling. I like that it's kind of a black obelisk. There's no five and a quarter inch base, which if you're planning on using this for a VR system, means that you'll have to plug in all the connections at the back only, that's it. Um, which isn't too much of an issue, especially because a lot of people aren't gonna be buying this for a VR PC. Um, but at the same time, if you are, then just kind of note that down. Other than that, uh, it is really nice. I do like the look of it, and especially like the look of the window as well, uh, despite the latch not working that well, but uh, ah well, it's all right. So um, yeah, I guess that's kind of it really. If you enjoyed the video and the sort of new style, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments down below and hit the like button and subscribe. We've got plenty of new videos coming out, especially on Saturdays at the moment. There's just a lot of sort of backlog of bits and pieces. I think next weekend is actually gonna be the HTC Vive thoughts and impressions kind of review video. So do stick around for that one. And uh, yeah, if you didn't like it, feel free to uh, dislike, but let me know why in the comments down below. Feel free to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well for updates and all that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, hope you're having a good weekend or whatever day you end up watching this. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video.